Hi, this is John and Nicole Sablon of To Have and To Hold, and we just want to remind you that when you're listening to To Have and To Hold, that this isn't any professional counseling that we're giving. This isn't any um, specific direction in your life. We're really just sharing from our hearts our personal experiences, our own perspective as it relates to marriage, family, and our faith. And so we just want to remind you that what you do is what you do. It has nothing to do with us. But we'll keep praying for you. Keep praying for us. God bless. Welcome back to another episode of To Have and To Hold. We're being pretty consistent. You notice I've been saying that just because it kind of encourages us. That's right. Keeps us going. Yeah. Right? Well, with all your prayers too, that helps. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. What are we toasting to today, my love? Mm. To the location of service. Yes. Servant. Ser- servant. Okay. Service. Service. That sounds good. Yeah. Hmm. (laughs) Okay. So. Most people would call that a blooper. We just roll with it. Yeah. Yeah. We just roll with it. It's marriage. You got to roll with it. Mm -hmm. So the sacrament of, of service. Yeah. Yeah. So in the church, we have seven sacraments. And there's two sacraments of service. So just like, I guess, a little quick catechesis moment where we're teaching you. Sacraments of service, there's sacraments of initiation, and there's sacraments of healing. And so sacraments of initiation are baptism, uh, holy communion, and confirmation. Sacraments of healing are sacraments of reconciliation, as well as the anointing of the sick. And sacrament, the sacraments of service are holy orders, so ordination to the priesthood and or diaconate, and the sacrament of holy matrimony. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> we thought it was important, you know, we, were, we are here obviously to try to help couples or people who are discerning the vocation of marriage to understand what the sacrament really is, what this vocation really is. Because we, in our experience, both in our marriage as well as in the marriage ministry that we've done and when we walk with folks, we feel like this is a big part that's missing. Mm-hmm. We've talked about it before is the, this uh, concept and understanding of sacrifice right? and this concept and understanding of service. Yeah. And yet we're called to in this sacrament to serve one another, mm-hmm. right? to serve and by our very service, by our acts of trying to sanctify and purify our spouse, we ourselves are sanctified and purified during that process. Mm-hmm. When you said <clears throat> servant and you said that would be a blooper, is that more like a Freudian slip? <laughs> Freudian is a freak. <laughs> Freudian. Freud is a freak. So, uh, so you're saying, um, you know, you think about <clears throat> the vocation of service and how to serve one another. Mm-hmm. And I think that there is an idea out there that there is a servant and there's one to serve and the one is to be served Mm -hmm. and that's not the idea in marriage Mm -hmm. and the idea that we are as you'd indicate in in genesis how we're created equally right and you talk about how uh, eve is created by the the side but using the rib Mm -hmm. of adam in the side to show that she is not um She's equal to. Equal in dignity, but different, yeah. In, in but, the sense of what we're called to, yep. Right, right. And so there's, there's, um, they're equal in their, in their marriage, and they're called to serve one another mm-hmm. out of reference for Christ. Mm-hmm. And so what does that look like? And I think about how that evolves during your marriage because initially, as you're, you know, focused on one another, it gets easier. But then when you have children, right? And it changes. Now you're serving both your spouse and your children. It gets a little bit more complicated and more difficult and tiring, exhausting. 
Mm -hmm. Well, I was even take it back to like courtship. Yeah. Right. I think the concept of service because you're trying to win over one's heart. Mm -hmm. And so it's really easy to serve and do and drop everything for that person because you're, you know, emotionally into them. You're attracted. You're like, hey, I really am into this, this gal or into this guy. Not all cases, but generally speaking, that you're more apt to try to serve them because you're trying to win them over. Mm. And so doing, you're thinking like doing things for them. Doing things for them, yeah, just like flowers or any any act of of you know whether it be giving or just any act of service. Okay. Because it's and again, there's a little bit of probably indirect self love, right? You're doing it to get something back. Yeah. I think that's some of our, our fallenness. But I would say even then, and then to your point, and then we get married, and what all does that all go away? Do we stop dating? Do we stop serving each other? Do or when kids happen, do we stop serving each other? Or is one expected to serve more than the other? Right. Right. Which I think is what we tend to see is that we come into marriage with perhaps preconceived notions or a certain expectation, a certain experience from your witness of what happened in family your nuclear origin. family, family yeah. of origins, who was actually the servant in the home. Uh -huh. Or was it equally displayed? Were they both serving one another? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, people come into it, and I think we've brought it up in previous episodes about the, you know, marriage is 50-50, which is an <clears throat> wrong, mm -hmm. right? It's not. It's, it's all of you. It's an exchange of persons. Mm -hmm. There's no half of your body that goes into that. It's actually you becoming one flesh. You're giving of your entire self. Exactly. You know, mind, right. body, soul, uh, and, and everything that comes with that. Right. But I, I think we've run into issues where there is a misunderstanding mm -hmm. and a misappropriation and, and just really a, a failure at living out what the sacrament calls for. Mm -hmm. We've talked about it when I compare, you know, Adam's first command to, you know, to essentially serve, protect, and defend, abide, and shamar, to till and to keep, mm -hmm. you know, all of creation, all of, and of course, ultimately, Eve and, and any children that come from that marriage, and how we see the failure, not that women are free from it, primarily with men, right, because they say, hey, I'm going off to work, mm -hmm. I'm working, it's your responsibility, wife, yeah. mom, to take care of the kids, especially in the context of those mothers who are fortunate and blessed to stay at home and raise those kids. Yeah. Right. And then you have the other challenge where you have a mom who perhaps has to work and raise the kids. Mm -hmm. And they lose the joint effort. Correct. Mm -hmm. It's a, the responsibility, responsibility is placed on maybe one more on the spouse than the other. And what a missed opportunity. You know, I think about, um, you know, when we had our children, it was, it was, it was difficult because we're not only serving one another, and we're still serving our children. And there's only a certain number of hours a day. We have a certain amount of capacity yeah. in order to do things. And um, you remember when we were trying to put them to sleep, get a, uh, a routine. Yeah. You know, trying mm -hmm. to get them to sleep. Yeah, it was interesting though because we never had an issue. It's like we put them to bed and they slept through the whole night. I mean, as, as far as we know. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, those are, you know, and, and who does, you know, bedtime? Who puts them to sleep? Are we doing this together? Who's, who's reading to the children? Who's bathing them? Right, right. right. Do, do I come home after a long day's work and, and do I just need to relax, right? Mm -hmm. And, and you, you should be the one caring for all of that because maybe I'm too stressed, mm -hmm. you know, from a long day supposed to work. And I think, you know, we're sometimes... When we have a misunderstanding of that role and this misunderstanding of service and, and honestly are being uh, pretty selfish and you know um, and I and I think men suffer this more than women is we think we somehow merited time off from caring for our children mm -hmm. you know it's like the idea where it says ah oh, you know hey man I can't I can't hang out with you this weekend because I'm babysitting my kids I'm like babysitting your kids mm -hmm. they're, your, they're your kids right mm-hmm you know, that, that mentality, right? Like, you're, like, what is going through your head to think as if those, these are your children? Right, right. And, it's, and, and, and God, in his infinite wisdom, knew that children needed both a, a father and a mother. Right. And, and for <clears throat> a secure development, they need both present and emotionally available. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many clients I have that um, 
really there's a lot of issues because their parents haven't been emotionally available, both mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And I think now it's even more difficult because aside from going outside the home to work, as it has been, mm -hmm. but now you have this other, we have these distractions with social media. Mm -hmm. And so we find ourselves coming home in order to relax or decompress and we're on our phones. And what a missed opportunity to engage with our children and our family. Mm -hmm. And it's important for us, I think, to establish some sort of rituals when we enter the home. Mm -hmm. So we've talked about this. You know, one of the, the rituals is by ensuring that if you are stressed, one practical way to reduce stress is with oxytocin. Mm -hmm. And so how do you increase not, not as opposed to Oxycontin. Oh, goodness. That's, yeah. I'm not talking about that. No okay, point. so uh, oxytocin, so physical touch. Mm -hmm. And so the importance of having um, embracing... My, level, my primary love language, by the way. Physical touch, yes. yes. <clears throat> so embracing one another and allowing each other just to hold each other for good, and I always say seven seconds, or uh, kiss each other for seven seconds, allow for that to release the oxytocin, oxytocin to re de, um, decompress, which is so nice. And in, in both, as a partnership, to strengthen that, then to spend time with your children. It's a beautiful ritual mm -hmm. that we have, but then um, it also gets us in terms of, I think, coming together and then um, being able to, to care of our children. I know when they were small, you know, we set a certain bedtime because that was when they had a, not only they go to sleep, that allows us time to do, you know, for prayer and for time for one another. And establishing those, those type, of, type of routine, I think, pr provides security, not only for the family, for your, the children, because they know what to expect, right. but then also for the two of you. So I know that, um, you know, when we have something to discuss, I know I'm going to get my time with you after you know you come home and we're busy with the practices or with it with dinner and preparation and all that and getting the kids off to bed i know that i can look forward to that time together where we come together and and we have those sort of conversations mm -hmm. in our in our nightly exam yeah i mean to go back to the partnership <clears throat> where you know if really and we get it we know raising kids and all the demands that that calls for Especially if, if in the, un, you know, the, I think, unfortunate situation where both parents are having to work, right? Because mm -hmm. I think it, it is something to be said. And we were there. Yeah, we were there. Especially, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we dealt with it. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. You know, because we didn't have any other uh, choice. But I think for those that are able and blessed to where the mom can sit, nobody's going to raise your kids better than you, especially right. in this day and age. However, going back to the, the, the emotional connection, mm -hmm. we both have long days worth of work and how much quicker... And what, whatever that looks like. Right. Because just because that someone's not working um, outside the home doesn't mean that it's, it's not work. Correct. Maintaining a home and raising children is work. Oh, yeah. It's the hardest work. Exactly. It's, and it's, most important. And most important. Most efficacious. You want to say how you impact the world. Let me just sidebar on this mm -hmm. one, right? If you think about you want to impact the, impact the world in an a efficacious way... Um, Hitler had parents, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Stalin had parents. Mm -hmm. They impacted this world in a negative way. Blessed, you know, or JP2 had parents, mm -hmm. right? St. Teresa of Lisieux had parents. And so you think about all of these uh, great saints of the world who had parents who affected them. And again, some of them rose from horrendous family environments. So it's not that just because you are living a holy and virtuous marriage that somehow your kid is gonna do it, gives them a better chance, but it, it allows to be able to plant that seed. But just going back to the situation of emotional connection. Yeah. At, at the end of the night, if I wanna connect with my wife, yeah. I guarantee you that's gonna be a lot better and sooner if I assist with uh, getting the kids bathed and off and, and, and off to bed and reading and you know cleaning up the, the kitchen and helping with the dishes because my wife ended up cooking or vice versa, um, you know putting things away, it's going to happen a lot quicker and probably in a more uh, 
efficient efficient um amiable way mm. Mm -hmm. Versus me going, hey, I'm going to go relax. I'm going to yeah. kick my feet up on the couch, watch the game with the beer. Mm -hmm. Let me know when you're ready to go to bed. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, I'm glad you brought that up because I think that in a lot of situations, we can validate our, our behavior mm -hmm. in thinking, um, I don't have to serve because I already did it. Mm -hmm. I, already, I worked my eight to five job. I'm providing I'm for providing. you. providing. Exactly. Which is interesting because animals provide too, right? Like we, we somehow reduce ourselves. Men do this a lot. We reduce ourselves to animals. Animals can procreate, in case you were wondering. They can also provide food. Mm -hmm. We're more than animals, mm -hmm. right? So you're not doing anything more than a dog would do mm -hmm. or a bird would do. Mm -hmm. And so I just challenge the men out there to, to be more than just that. Mm -hmm. Right, but to somehow think that because you provide, and again, it's a big deal. I know the, the pressure is associated with that. Yeah. I work pretty hard to provide for my family. I have for mm -hmm. for a long time. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yay for you. Yay for me. Mm -hmm. But where, where am I at mostly for, with my wife? Where am I at with my kids? Yes. Right. You go, but even going back to the uh, rituals, right. the oxytocin. Mm -hmm. What a great. Not only is it great to connect with your wife or your spouse from a hard day's work, you you know, but that seven second kiss. Mm -hmm. Right, but then imagine what your kids see when they see mom and dad still embracing mm -hmm. mom and dad together working on getting the, the dinner prepared together working on all right well you get little Jimmy off and doing this one and I'll, and I'll take care of you know little Sally over here and, and, and you read the story I'll bathe over here and, and vice versa and they see that they're being cared for by both parents mm -hmm. so and, and in the same sense this is the beauty about the sacrament of matrimony as a, as a sacrament of service in the same way that we're off doing our own things, being emotionally connected and serving our children, we're connecting to each other emotionally. Why? Because mm -hmm. we're taking this on together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a better interaction, I would imagine, mm -hmm. at the end of the night when we're getting ready to retire, when you felt like I worked my butt off to help get to bed faster with you mm -hmm. by caring for our kids. Mm -hmm. Unless, rather than putting it all on you because I'm busy or my kids stress me out or whatever nonsense that we, have, we hear out there mm -hmm. with really effeminate men, or women for that matter, um, who, who can't even deny themselves, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and deny pleasure in order to pursue the arduous, which it's difficult raising kids. It's difficult serving your wife all the time, mm -hmm. right? Just like it is difficult serving me all the time. Mm -hmm. Because you don't feel like it all the time, and sometimes I'm not always acting deserving of that service, which has no bearing on whether or not you serve each other anyway. Mm -hmm. And vice versa. And vice versa, yeah. Mm -hmm. And vice yeah. versa. Yeah. So I, th I think maybe talk about uh, some ways that you could, you can be emotionally available to mm -hmm. your, your wife and, and your children. Mm -hmm. I think a big part of it is being intentional, intentional about it. Yeah. It, it, uh, and I get it. It's hard. You know, we, we, I know we have some times where we're, you and I are wired to be workaholics, you know, yeah. in the sense like we're wired to just go after it and get it. And when we're in the zone, we're in the zone. Yeah. And it's very difficult to be like pivot mm -hmm. if you're asking, babe, you know, and vice versa, or one of the kids. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's not so much now, um, but yeah. you know, when one of the kids are needing something from you, to feel interrupted mm -hmm. from whatever thought, and you have to balance. There's an ebb and a flow. Mm -hmm. Hey, baby, do you need do you need to take care of this now, mm -hmm. or can it give you give me ten minutes to finish off mm -hmm. this? email I got to go fire off or whatever right mm -hmm. so I think it's just being delivered ab about it and to say like yeah it's going to take it's going to be inconvenience it's going to take humility it's going to take self-sacrifice it's a certain perspective I mean you got to work on the virtue but I think being intentional in that way mm -hmm. being intentional in the, the rituals that we have mm -hmm. um, communicating mm -hmm. saying yeah. hey hey sweetie I need help or you know babe I've had a I'm, I'm struggling today yeah. Maybe I need you to pick up a little bit more, right? Mm -hmm. And vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, that level of vulnerability where we can do that, where we can we can actually say, you know, I got this one. You yeah. know what I mean? I, I got a little bit more energy today, or I got the grace God will provide me. I know you had a tough day. Yeah. But it's not always like every day is a tough day. I'm, you know, but it's 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 actually authentically, genuinely, sincerely knowing that I can lean on you and vice versa mm -hmm. when I need that extra assistance. Um, when when things are being tough to balance. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like there's a lot of self-knowledge. You have to be aware of your limitations mm -hmm. and also where you are, where you're feeling. And am I in a place I could be 
emotionally available to my children mm -hmm. or my spouse. To some, to some degree. I, I think there also needs to be that even if you're not. To work, yeah. To but, go beyond yourself, to mm -hmm. be there. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And so I can't use that as an excuse, right. I can, but I can certainly ask for help. Correct. So knowing myself and, you know, may I have, can I have help in, in doing this? And so there has to be like some level of legitimacy. I can't just say it's because I don't feel like it. Yeah, it's I not mean, bad. feelings really have mm -hmm. nothing to do with it. In right. marriage, just so you know, right, that, that, that it, love is a decision. The cross doesn't feel good. Um, but but you're, you're emulating and imitating that. I mean, you've done that, I, I know, where you talk about the communication where you maybe were in thought or you were off and you'd be like, sorry, baby, I was off thinking about something else. Oh Can goodness, you repeat yes. Yes. what Can you, you just said? Can you share yes. that again? Yes. In two ways, right? Act of humility on your end. It's going to be an act of forgiveness and patience on my side yes. and humility to go, oh, okay, do I take it personal? Well, you're not listening to me. Or do I just be like... It happens. It happened. Yeah, particularly, and now you're referring to even our difference in temperaments. Mm -hmm. It's a lot harder for me to switch gears. Yeah. So if I'm, as you're talking about, I can get easily engrossed in something. And so if there is a, um, you know, if you're needing me at a time and I'm not expecting it, it does take me sometimes to, uh, you know, minutes to kind of make that switch. Mm -hmm. And um, where your temperament is, is you're going to go right to it, right? So I can see where you have something to say and you're going to share it. And it takes me a little <laughs> bit where I'm like, okay, hold on. I want to hear you. I want to be here for you. Mm -hmm. Repeat it again. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think that that's, those are important things, right? And even with our children, I'd say, you know, just practical things, just sitting and listening, asking how our day is. I, I think the time at the table is really huge because... Um, you know, you're, you're asking each other about how things have gone. You know, that's your time that you can really connect with your children. There's so much research out there about how um, children developed, um, have healthier relationships with their, with their parents um, during that family dinner. Just, just, have, setting, just, just having, having dinner dinners. together. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and they're more likely if they have a problem to come to you. And they're less likely to choose friends that are perhaps, you know, um, making poor choices or engaging in sort of drugs or, um, you know, b bad conduct. Mm -hmm. So that's important to know. I think about, um, you know, if you ever want to share something with your children, you know, they're, you have a captive audience. Their mouths are full. They can't talk back, right? They're eating. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so that, that's a time to really engage with them and, and check in. We used to do the highs and lows just to kind of get a gauge to where the kids are. Mm -hmm. But I say in addition to that, one of the things I really valued with my time with our, with our children is that because when we're all together, you know, the kids, they tend to, um, they share certain things with with their siblings around and they share different things when we had time with them independently right. so having dates with them individual mm -hmm. dates with them was really helpful I think to understand what's going on they share things with us um, that they may not with their siblings I think that's important I think it's important for our daughter to know how to be treated and mm -hmm. having those time that time with you true yeah mm -hmm. yeah I mean if you want for the men out there with their daughters, right? If you want your daughter to choose a man that is worthy of her love, show her the type of man that is worthy of her love, right? right. And, and I think the same thing goes for our, our young men out there, right? That they should learn how to um, uphold the dignity of all women, starting mm -hmm. with their mamas, right? And, and of course, with their sisters and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I think, you know, there's, we've brought this up in previous episodes where there's it is a difficult balance but it's a necessary balance between the the ebb and flow between spouses and that connection and the, and the children because mm -hmm. oftentimes we can spend a lot of time just on our children and then lose connection with our spouse That's or spend true. a lot of time on on our spouse and lose connection with our children right so mm -hmm. You know, for the men out there that are tempted to think you're off there working 12, 14, 15 hours and your wife's home, your wife's got a good relationship with the kids. You don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and, and because you're 
And even if you're physically present in the house, which is a big deal, there's still better statistics for your kids. If you're emotionally absent, if right, you're not present to them, um, you don't even know how to interact with them, right? How, how many times have you heard people say, you know, if you sit in silence or you have, can you sit at a dinner table and look at each other and have anything to talk about at all? Mm -hmm. Or have any type of connection? And I think that's what ends up happening. And then you see these marriages fail because they go, well, I, I don't, I fell out of love. Yeah. Right or whatever it is. What did you do to stay in love? Mm -hmm. What did you do to stay connected? Mm -hmm. What did you do to find out? Or I didn't know my kid was struggling with this. How, how often did you? Were you engaged in their life? Did you? Did you? Did you check, you in, check with them. in with them? Did mm -hmm. you see how their day was going? As trivial as it may seem, so important. It's so important. As trivial mm -hmm. as their little eight-year-old problem may seem that day to you, mm -hmm. after you're over here, you know, slaying dragons, I guess, whatever it is you got going on, right? It may be a big deal when you know they they fell off the seesaw that day. Mm -hmm. Right, or maybe a big deal when uh, little Jimmy's best friend Cody doesn't want to play with him anymore. Mm -hmm. Right, that, that's maybe a big deal. It may not be a big deal to you, but it's like staying engaged. Mm -hmm. You know, but I, I think going back to this level of service, mm -hmm. I think it's so important because I think we see marriages fractured and a lot of contention mm -hmm. and a lot of emotionally disconnected spouses because there's not a uh, right perspective of that there's not a right perspective of the level of service and sacrifice required in a marriage mm -hmm. what it means to truly be husband and wife what it means to truly be a parent who lays down their life for their kids and for, and for their spouses so you know what would you say as a as as a wife mm -hmm. and as a mom um that uh perhaps both sets of parents can do something you know better what, what do you recommend to address some of those issues where we see perhaps an imbalance or mm -hmm. an, un, an unfair, unrealistic expectation of service. Mm -hmm. I think that we're hitting on a lot of them and some of it is really underestimating the value of staying connected, mm -hmm. you know, and um, time goes by really quickly. The days go by really quickly and we lose track. And I think that that's why having established routines are so important. Mm -hmm. And also trying to cut out things that are really unnecessary. Yeah. Um, phones and um, you know distractions are huge, and so perhaps putting a limit on that. You know, maybe it's after a certain time, or you're you establish a rule that when family time, it's you know, phones are turned off. I know for us, there were no t phones at the table. It was a, it was <laughs> deliberate. We were intentional about connecting with one another. And so whatever that looks like for each one of you and your families, you know, connecting, being intentional about that, being emotionally available could be that, you know, I know that it's hard for some people, especially after an exhausting day. And then now my child is having a breakdown on something that I'm thinking is just so insignificant. But being able to be there and come alongside my child and listen to them and just see, is, is there anything I can do to help you? What can I do? And allows them to feel secure that you are you're there for them, mm -hmm. and in situation in, in their greatest need. So I think doing things like that, just being intentional about that, and our spouses. You know, sometimes we feel that we have to fix it, and uh, and it's yeah. not really um, something that we need to fix, and and we don't have to have sometimes the right words. Mm -hmm. It's more so just being available to one another, hearing each other out, and um, meeting them with compassion and just saying, you know, being honest, I don't have the answers, but I'm so glad that you told me. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you shared with me. And, you know, what can we do together? Mm -hmm. And maybe there isn't, you know, maybe there isn't anything. Maybe I'm just going to say I'm taking this to prayer. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely nothing I can do, and it hurts me. Mm -hmm. But I can't do anything. I can't take away the pain or whatever it is that you're going through. But I'll certainly pray w with you. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think that's you hit on a, a key point, right? If you're not praying together, it's likely going to be difficult to to stay together, right? right. In that sense. And I think um, when we see our life as a as a sacrament, our vocation as a sacrament of service, and we see it as a as a way to offer up prayer and mm -hmm. sacrifice for the sanctification of each other, mm -hmm. how these things become different in perspective, mm -hmm. right? Um, if I see uh, an opportunity not to babysit my kids, 
but to spend time with the kids that God has gifted me with, mm -hmm. right? That I've been able to procreate, co-create with God and with my spouse. What a different perspective that may be. Mm -hmm. Because time flies, you know, we're, you know, uh, it, as you get older and as we've experienced and have talked about where it's like, we always talked about being at this stage and we're at this stage. Mm -hmm. And it seems so far away from us. And I think, you know, at the end of life, it's not gonna be about your stocks. It's not gonna be about your superficial relationships or friends or your job or your title or your promotions or your 401k or your material possessions, it's gonna be about relationship. It's gonna be about love. Mm -hmm. you know, the Harvard Grant study proved that, right? That if you don't have love and relationships, you were unhappy, right. even in the most quote unquote successful mm -hmm. cases. And so we're, we're given a great gift in this vocation mm -hmm. to be able to experience really the love of the Holy Trinity, right? Mm -hmm. We're emulating that. Mm -hmm. um, we see God as a communion of persons and then at service to one another. Mm -hmm. Right at, at service. So for us to be at service and subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ mm -hmm. and to really use this as a time to connect. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot easier when we're in it together. Mm -hmm. Right. The dishes are a lot easier when we're in it together. Mm -hmm. Raising kids is a lot easier. I'm not saying it doesn't come with the sense of being tired and right. the mm -hmm. monotony at times and some of the, 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 the rigor and you're just tired, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, but it's a lot better when your spouse is right there with you doing it. Mm -hmm. And to, to be intentional and deliberate about staying connected. Because mm -hmm. so many marriages and families are suffering from that. Right. And I think you got married with the intent for a life together forever. Mm -hmm. Your kids deserve that. And uh, when you're not putting forth the effort, I don't feel like we're living up to that. Mm -hmm that obligation mm -hmm. very well. Yeah, you talk about stocks and bonds. I think about, you know, the investment and the returns, right? Mm. What about putting into your relationships at home with your spouse and your children and the return that you get mm -hmm. from it? Priceless, if only, right? You spent mm -hmm. as much time and energy in, in, in investing and finding out about which, you know, as much as you're spending time on which stocks are moving and what's the, you know, latest, greatest, of how, how your spouse, how can I better serve you, babe? Mm -hmm. How was your day like, son? How was your day like, sweetie? Mm -hmm. You know, is there something that, you know, tell me a little bit more about it. Not just the simple good. Okay, how are you doing? Good. And then move on. Right. But, well, what is it? You know, mm -hmm. how was, you know, how, what did you learn today? Mm -hmm. You know, what were your highs and lows today? Mm -hmm. You find out about you. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, staying connected, being available. Mm -hmm. Right. And serving one another in those moments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, hopefully, as we kind of wrap up this episode this is something that helps your marriage especially for those of you and some of you may be out there watching maybe um you know aren't married yet but you're considering the married vocation and, and, and really look into what the church calls for as a sacrament of service for those of you who are like hey we're in a pickle we were married civilly but we're not married in the church you're married you need to get married in the church unless we know somebody we'll let you know right or those of you who may have like all of us right have come up short as it relates to living out this sacrament of holy matrimony to what we're called to. Pray for God, pray to God for the grace to, to restart and renew and you know continue to work on, on being of service to one another and staying emotionally connected. So until the next episode of It's Having the Hold, keep us in prayer and we'll keep praying for you. And keep working on that marriage of serving one another, all for the glory of God and the salvation of each other's souls. Cheers to you. God bless.